Welcome to My Safety Training Online presents Bloodborne Pathogens 2012. What you will learn. We'll talk about the definitions of bloodborne pathogen, the requirements of a written exposure control plan. We'll give you general information, record keeping, and training requirements. We'll identify engineering and work practice controls as well as personal protective equipment that can be used. We'll familiarize you with hepatitis B vaccination and post-exposure follow-up procedures. Slide 1, Definitions for Bloodborne Pathogens. What is an occupational exposure? It is defined as a reasonably anticipated skin, eye, mucous membrane, or parental contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials that may result in the performance of a perf employee's duties. What is parenteral? Parenteral literally is the entry into the body by any other route other than mouth or digestive system. Typically it takes the form of a needle stick, cut, or abrasion. This definition includes human bites that break the skin and which are most likely to occur in violent situations. Who is covered by the bloodborne pathogen standard? The standard covers all employees who could be reasonably expected to come into contact with human blood or OPIM in the course of their work. OPIM stands for Other Potentially Infectious Material and the full rule is located at the web OSHA.gov. Blood is defined as human blood, components and the products of human blood. Pathogen is defined as an agent of disease Pathogens include bacteria such as staph, viruses, HIV, fungi, and such as yeast. The term pathogen was devised about 1880 and was compounded from patho, meaning disease, and gen, me indicating a producer or a producer of disease. Pathogenic microorganisms in human blood that can cause disease. So, while HIV, HBV, and HCV are all specifically named. The term includes any pathogenic microorganism that is present in the human blood, or OPM, other potentially infectious material, and can infect and cause disease in persons who are exposed to blood containing the pathogen. OPIM, or other potentially infectious materials, include human blood components such as semen, vaginal secretions, serial, serial cerebral spinal fluid, sinal fluid fluids, pleural fluids, pyocardial fluids, peritoneal fluid fluids, and amniotic fluids. OPIM also includes saliva in dental procedures or any body fluid that is visible visibly contaminated with blood. Any fluids which in the differentiation of a body fluid type is difficult or impossible. Engineering controls, the importance and definition. All control measures that isolate or remove a hazard from the workplace, such as sharps, disposal containers, and sheath, self-sheathing needles, and safer medical devices such as sharps with engineering sharps, injury protections, and needle needleless systems are engineering controls. The expanded wording can be found in the Needle Stick Prevention Act. Sharps with engineering sharps injury protections or SE SIP are non-needle sharps or needle devices containing built-in safety features. Fringes with sliding sheath that shields the attached needle after use, needles that retract into a syringe after use, or shielded or retracting catheters. 
IV systems that use a catheter port with a needle housed in a protective covering are all examples of SCSIP. Needleless systems. These are defined as devices which provide an alternative to needles for various procedures to reduce the risk of injury involving contaminated sharps. An example of this would be the collection of bodily fluids or jet injection systems which deliver a liquid medication beneath the skin and, or into a muscle. What is HIV? HIV is huma, human immunodeficiency virus. It is the virus that causes HIDS. It is passed from one person to another, basically from blood to blood contact or sexual contact. Persons with HIV have what is called HIV infection. Most of these people will develop AIDS as a result of their HIV infection. Here we see the organization of the HIV-1 virion. What is AIDS? AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. It is caused by the HIV virus which destroys certain kinds of blood cells, CD4 plus T cells, the helper cells, which are crucial to the body's immune system. The immune system is weakened to the point that it has difficulty fighting off certain infections. These types of infections are known as opportunistic infections. Section 2, Bloodborne Pathogens and the Spread of Disease. What bodily fluids transmit HIV? Blood, semen, vaginal fluid, breast milk, other bodily fluids containing blood. These, may, these body fluids may spread the HIV virus. Cerebral spinal fluid, synovial fluid, and amniotic fluid. Who gets hepatitis B, and what is it? Hepatitis B is a germ or virus that gets into your body and attacks your liver. Your liver helps digest your body digest the food that you eat. It also helps get your body helps your body get rid of poisons. Hepatitis B vac vaccine protects against serious disease causing inflammation and damage to the liver. Risk factors for acute hepatitis B in 1992-93 show that injection from drug use is 15%, unknown is 31%, and a tiny percent, 41% is heterosexual contact. Hepatitis B is 100 times easier to catch than HIV. Get vaccinated against this disease. Will I die from hepatitis B? Most people, 9 out of 10, recover from HBV, but some do not. Recovery usually results in lifetime immunity. Hepatitis B sometimes causes cirrhosis that does not go away. It can also lead to liver cancer, which may lead to death. Good medical care can make your risk less for each of these. How do you get hepatitis B? It is passed by contact with the blood of some, uh, or other bodily fluids of someone who has the virus. There are three main ways to get hepatitis B. Having sex without condoms for someone who has hepatitis B, being born to a mother who has the virus, or sharing needles and syringes. What is hepatitis C? HCV. The most common chronic bloodborne infection in the United States, according to the CDC. In about 85% of cases, the infection is permanent, and these people infect to become chronic carriers. The number one cause of liver transplants in the U.S. Sources of infection for persons with hepatitis C. 60% is from injecting drug use. 15% is from sexual contact, 10% from transfusion, and 10% unknown. 
How is hepatitis C spread? Primarily through large or repeated direct percutaneous exposures to human blood, such as injecting, injecting drug use, blood or blood product transfusions, Occupational transmission of HCV is inefficiently transmitted by occupational exposures. There are case reports of transmission from a blood splash to the eye, but there are no reports of transmission from skin exposures to blood. Healthcare personnel to patient transmission of HCV. This is rare with the prevalence of 1-2% to among healthcare workers. In the U.S., none are, are related to performing invasive procedures. HCV is not spread by kissing, hugging, sneezing, coughing, food or water sharing, or eating, sharing eating utensils. Let's do a recap now. Diseases transmitted in the blood summary. Hepatitis B is a virus, hepatitis, as is hepatitis C. And HIV is also known as the AIDS virus. More than 20 other infections can be tr transmitted through contaminated needles. The chances of getting hepatitis B from a syringe infected with the hepatitis B virus are 30%. The chances of getting hepatitis C from a syringe infected by hepatitis C virus is 3 to 5%. The chances of getting HIV from a syringe infected with HIV virus are point all right, let's discuss, discuss uh, frequently asked questions, hoaxes, and rumors. You can take time out now to discuss the issues in the workplace as well as have a group discussion about this topic. Section 3, Exposure Control Program and Bloodborne Pathogens. Exposure Control Program. Each employer having employees with an occupational exposure must have a written exposure control plan designed to eliminate or minimize the employee's exposure. The elements of an exposure control plan are the exposure determination, implementation details, and the procedure for evaluation of circumstances surrounding exposure incidents. Additional requirements imposed by ECP are detailed in the Needle Stick Prevention Act. The ECP must be reviewed and updated annually and whenever tasks, jobs, and procedures are changed. The review shall reflect changes in technology, document consideration and implementation of the appropriate safer medical devices. Documentation solicitation of input from non-managerial employees who are responsible for direct patient care, a representative sample of those with a potential exposure, or listing the employees involved and describing the process by which the input was requested. Other documentation includes references to minutes of meetings, copies of documents used to request employee participation, or records of responses received from employees. Each employer who has an employee with an occupational exposure must prepare an exposure determination. This exposure determination must contain the following. A list of job classifications, a list of all tasks and procedures or groups of closely related tasks and procedures and the exposure determination must be made without regard to the use of personal protective equipment. Here we can see an ex example of exposure determination is easier said than done. On one side you see an easy, an EMT worker. On the other side you can see a not so easy, a crew person in a fast food restaurant. Determining exposure is how to decide is written in the Collateral Duty Clause. 
employers with employees who are not routinely exposed to blood or OPIM may fall under the collateral duty clause, in which case hepatitis B vaccination would not need to be offered until an incident involving the presence of blood or OPIM occurs. In order for an employer to qualify under the collateral duty cause, the following conditions must be met. Reporting procedures must be in place. Reports of incidents must include the names, situations, as well as all employees involved in any situation, must be offered a full hepatitis B vaccination no later than 24 hours after the incident. Bloodborne pathogen training must be provided to all affected employees. Remember folks, the OSHA record keeping log form can double as your bloodborne pathogens log form. You don't have to reinvent the wheel to keep your record keeping requirements. Determining exposure. First aid and CPR trained employees and the applicability of the BBP rule. The mere posting of names of employees with first aid training does not constitute an assignment. Section 4, complying with bloodborne pathogen standards in the workplace. Methods of compliance include universal precautions, engineering and work practice controls, personal protective equipment, and housekeeping. Remember, where engineering controls will reduce employee exposure either by removing, eliminating, or isolating the hazard, they must be used. Univer universal precautions versus standard precautions. Universal precautions are defined as an approach to infection control that treats all human blood and certain human body fluids as if they are infectious for HIV, HBV, and other bloodborne pathogens. Universal precautions must be observed to prevent contact with blood and other OPIM. Because differentiation between body fluid types is difficult or impossible, all body fluids must be considered potentially OPIM. Standard precautions are, are defined as based on the latest information on transmission of infections in hospitals. Revise CDC's guidelines for isolation of precautions in hospitals. Recommend hospitals and patient care institutions implement standard precautions in place of universal precautions. Standard precautions correlate with universal precautions with minor revisions in a non nomenclature only situation. Additional categories such as airborne droplets and contact precautions have been developed to manage specific diseases transmitted via such routes. Defining engineering controls. These are controls that isolate or remove bloodborne pathogens hazards from the workplace, such as sharp disposal containers or self-sheathing needles. Overfilling containers is an often reported problem. Be sure your containers are large enough, numerous enough, and designed in position to see into as well as being located conveniently. Methods of compliance are covered under 1910-1030 of additional with additional OSHA rules for bloodborne pathogens. Every employer with employees that use medical sharps in direct patient care must, at least annually, identify, evaluate, and select engineering controls or work practice controls, including safer medical devices. Here we can see examples of engineering controls using a needless system, such as hypodermic syringes with self-sheathing capacity, or hypodermic syringes with retractable technology or phlebotomy needles with self-blunting safety devices. Here we can see more examples of engineering controls with needleless systems, such, in, such as retracting lancets with safety features. Engineering controls with needleless systems are devices used for fingerprint pricks, most often to test blood sugar in people with diabetes. 
When these devices are triggered, the Landsat instantly protracts and cannot be used again. After use, the device must be placed in a sharps box and treated with a, with, as regulated waste. Here we can see more examples of engineering controls with needleless systems, such as those attached to a syringe needle or those attached to a blood tubular holder. Methods of compliance. What are common work practice controls? These are defined as practices that reduce the likelihood of exposure by changing the way a task is performed. An example of this would be prohibiting the recapping of needles using a two-handed technique or hand washing. Employers must provide hand washing facilities which are readily accessible to employees. If the hand washing facilities are not possible, antiseptic hand cleanser and towels or towelettes must be available. You can see your CDC hand hygiene guideline fact sheet for this information. Methods of compliance continued. Pers using personal protective equipment. Employer must provide at no cost to the employee appropriate personal protective equipment. Appropriate would be defined as only if it does not permit the blood or other OPIM to pass through or reach the employee's work clothes or street clothes, under gardens, skin, eyes, mouth, or other mucous membranes under normal conditions of use for the duration of time which the protective equipment will be used. Ensure that the worksite is maintaining a clean and sanitary condition is also another employer responsibility. The employer must determine and implement a, an appropriate written schedule. Appropriate disinfections, infe disinfectants include diluted household bleach solutions or EPA regulated di diperculides. Section 5 Handling Waste and Complying with the Bloodborne Pathogens Act. Regulated waste, what it is. Liquid or semi-liquid blood or OPIM, contaminated sharps, pathological or microbiological waste containing blood or OPIM, items caked with dry blood or OPIM that are capable of releasing these materials during handling. Sharps containers must be clovable, puncture resistant, leak proof, labeled or color coded. During use, containers must be easily accessible, maintained upright, routinely replaced. When moved, the containers must be closed immediately. If leaking, put in a secondary container. If reusable, opened, emptied, cleaned in a manner that will not be exposed expose employees. Needles must be disposed of in a sharps container. Improperly disposed needles can injure housekeepers, custodians, and other people. Handling regulated waste. Contaminated laundry must be handled as little as possible with minimum agitation. It must be in bagged, containerized where used, not sorted, rinsed where used, placed or transported in labeled or color-coded bags or containers, placed or transported in leak-proof bags or containers if leaks, likely. Employees must wear the proper PPE. Section, section 7, Implementing an Exposure Control Program. Hepatitis B Vaccination. Hepatitis B vaccine and vaccination series are made available to all within 10 working days. The employee may decline if to be vaccinated. Employees may change their mind at any time. They must be trained to report exposures immediately in any post-exposure evaluation and follow-up made available to them. Services are to be free of charge to the employee at a reasonable time and place. They are to be performed by sup or supervised by a physician or other healthcare professional. And the tests are to be done and conducted by an accredited laboratory. 
Implementing Exposure Control Program, a personnel, service, and temporary employment agency require as a condition of employment that the prospective employees obtain a hefty vaccination on their own. Yes, since there is no employer-employee relationship established in a pre-employment, OSHA conditions do not apply. Vaccination details regarding the health care personnel. The definition of health care personnel is people, persons, whether employees, students, contractors, attending clinicians, public safety personnel, or volunteers whose activities involve contact with patients or with blood or other bodily fluids from patients in a health care, library, or public safety setting. The potential exists for blood and bodily fluid exposures to other workers and the same principles of exposure management could be applied to other settings. The definition of exposure for HCPs or healthcare professionals is a percutaneous injury or needle stick or cut or sharp object or contact of mucinous, mucinous membrane or non-intact skin exposure with blood, tissue or other bodily fluids that are potentially infectious. More vaccination details regarding healthcare professionals. Testing for vaccination effectiveness, special requirements for SCP, HCP, some clinical features of acute hepatitis B infection, a laboratory diagnosis of an H hepatitis B infection, and a chronic infection with HBV. Post exposure evaluation and follow up. When an exposure incident is reported, the employer immediately makes medical evaluation with appropriate medical treatment as indicated. The evaluation should address at least the following items. Document the route of exposure. Identify and document the source individual. Obtain consent and test. If the source is known to be infectious, give a copy of the regulations to a healthcare professional. Provide the exposed employee with the test results and test the exposed employee's blood as soon as possible, if the exposed employee consents. The employer makes sure access to clini clinicians is available. The healthcare professional has a copy of the OSHA BBP standard, and the healthcare professional receives a detailed description of the exposure incident. All relevant medical information is furnished and the employer obtains and provides the employee with a copy of the written opinion within 15 days. Post-exposure evaluation and follow-up continued. The health care professional makes sure all the circumstances are evaluated, medical decisions are based on CDC guidelines, and HCP sends the employer a written report within 15 days. Everything else is privileged information between the employee and HCP, and it shall not be included in the written report. For hepatitis B vaccinations, see your Department of Human Services. They provide mandatory HIV testing for occupational exposure to bodily fluids. Communicating hazards. Two methods. You can utilize lab labels and signs, or you can do information and training. Here we can see the signs and labels requir requirements in Table 1 where biohazard labeling or red container are necessary depending upon the situation. Information and training at no cost during the working hours and at a time of initial assignment to the risk of exposure. At least annually thereafter, sooner if changes or tasks or procedures occur. Material appropriate to educational level of the employee and covering the key concepts in the workbook in Appendix L and must cover the site specifics of the employee's workplace tasks or procedures. An opportunity for interactive questions and answers. The trainer is a must for the employee. And the trainer is expected to be knowledgeable in the subject matter as it relates to the specific workplace, but not necessarily as a health professional. 
Record keeping, four categories. Medical records, sharp injury log, training records, and the OSHA 301 log. Medical records kept confidential, HBV vaccination status. Any medical records sent to or received from healthcare professionals related to HBV exposure or immunization status. No HIV or other data may be collected and maintained for a duration of employment plus 30 years. The Sharps Injury Log. The employer shall maintain and establish a log for record keeping of percutaneous injuries from contaminated sharks. It shall contain at minimum the type and brand of the device involved in the incident, the department work area where the exposure occurred, an explanation how the incident occurred and maintained independent of the OSHA 300 log and maintained for five years. Training records shall contain the dates of training, the summary of the content covered, the trainer's names and qualifications, and maintained for three years from the date training occurred. If you have a privacy concern case, do not enter the employee's name on the OSHA 301 log. Instead, enter privacy case in, the, in place of the employee's name. You may keep a separate confidential list of case numbers, employee names for privacy concerns in order to update these cases. The injury log will furnish information to the compliance officer if asked to do so. An employer can use the 301 log as their sharps injury log and it must be on a separate page or used solely for needle sticks or in a way that which can easily provide extractable data such as a computer or a spreadsheet program. Healthcare professionals frequently ask questions. What is the risk of infection after occupational exposure? How many healthcare professionals have had been infected with pathogens? What is the exposure to blood from an individual whose infection status is unknown? What specific drugs are recommended for post-exposure treatment? How soon after an exposure to a pathogen should treatment start? Has the FDA approved these drugs to prevent pathogen infection following occupational exposure? My Safety Training Online Pathogens Safety Summary Recently anticipated skin, eye, mucous membrane, or parenteral contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials is a definition of BBP that may result from a performance of an employee's duties. Regulated waste is defined as a liquid or semi-liquid blood or OPIM contaminated shorts, pathological or microbiological bi waste containing blood or OPIM, items caked with drained blood, dried blood or OPIM that are capable of releasing these materials during, during handling. 